Hi guys, it's Julia and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I do videos on fashion, luxury, and travel, so if that's something you're into, definitely hit the subscribe button. I'm also on Instagram where I style all my handbags over there, and then I'm also on TikTok where I'm a little bit more fun and creative, so go check me out on TikTok. Today, I'm super excited because I'm going to be filming with my great friend Georgina, who's here. Hello. Do you want to introduce yourself, Georgina, and tell them what we're going to be talking about today? Yes. I've been friends with Juliet for a while, and I obviously like want to support her, so I always watch her videos, but I'm very new to Hermes, and a lot of the times like I'm watching videos, and I'm like, what? does that mean like what exactly is this and I, I came to her with the idea of just like a general 101 of like someone who is getting to know Hermes for the first time. I'm really appreciative that you came up with these questions. I want to mention that we did go shopping at Hermes yeah. as well so I'm going to show you guys a clip of that. We didn't really film too much in there because I just for privacy reasons didn't want to. But I guess before we get into the questions, do you want to just talk a little bit about the experience of shopping with me at Hermes? Because that was actually our first time doing it together. Yeah, that was beautiful. So I had been in the store only like one other time. So this was new to me. I just went in like as a customer who didn't have a sales associate and like was just picking up like one thing. I was literally like in and out. Whereas with you, it was, you had a sales associate, you were familiar with the brand. And so it was really nice to like talk with them. And then we ended up seeing like all the different floors. So we got to see a lot of the different areas of the brand. So that was really cool to see. And it was, it was exceptional service. Like it was, it was beautiful. That's why it's so great to have a sales associate because you get such a better experience at the store once you start to build that relationship with a sales associate. So where do you want to start? So maybe just like first off, like just like a brief history of the brand. Mm -hmm. Like we went in there and I saw horse riding gear and I was like, oh, is this? And like I've noticed now that there's like the horse logo and like that kind of stuff. Yes. No, that's exactly right. So basically Hermes started off with being an equestrian brand. So Thierry Hermes was really well known for his handcrafted saddles. He had a store in Paris. He just became well known for their durability, the simple elegance of the equestrian products. If you go to the store, they still actually have an equestrian section. It was beautiful to see like the, br like I loved the horse brushes, yeah. the like coats. It was, it was gorgeous. It's beautiful. The first time I went into Hermes actually was like many many years ago and the first thing I noticed was the saddle because yeah. I feel like it just like catches your eye it's almost like oh wow like this is yeah. really beautiful and so I think for us like all the Hermes lovers I think we really appreciate just the history of Hermes and where it stems from and the fact that they've maintained that history throughout their service even today. So now that we've learned about the history who shops at Hermes like what is the kind of client that they look for. Obviously it's an equestrian brand but has gone into like leather goods. Like what do you say is kind of like the essence of the brand? Yeah. Someone who really appreciates the history of Hermes which is that simple elegance, that classic design who appreciates quality and I think that stems in all of Hermes products. I also do think the ideal client would be someone who appreciates all the product lines. So I know Hermes has home goods, they have a beauty line, they have clothing. So they have just all these different departments that you can shop in. When we were there, yeah. I more than anything was like the scarves. Like yeah. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Like I appreciate anything with like an intricate kind of design. Yeah. And they were like so gorgeous. Like that for me was like everything this is the coolest oh yeah no this, the silk scarves are so so beautiful yeah and so now we've kind of established like the essence of a brand and the brand and who shops there like what would you say like like what was your process in terms of getting an a sales associate like an essay and like how do you communicate like how do you like establish your relationship with your essay that's a great question because uh i actually recently moved to la like two years ago so i had to start from scratch if you will with a sales associate connection and the way I did it uh, was I called up the store and I said I was looking for certain sandals it's actually my Oasis sandals and there they paired me with a sales associate so they said come on this date on this time and you'll have this sales associate so I walked in and then that's just how I started the relationship. At the end of the shopping, given I really liked my connection with that sales associate, I asked for their business card. 
Now, if I didn't have a great time shopping that sales associate, I would not have asked for a business card. So I would say just keep it as organic as possible. Nowadays, I don't think you, I don't think they're taking appointments by the phone. I'm not too sure. But now that the store is open and running, I would highly just recommend walking in, shopping, talking to a sales associate, and then again, through that process at the end of shopping, then asking for a business card. That's yeah. actually what I tend to do in France too. And I've done it three different times with three different sales associates. So it really works very well. And yeah. don't push it, like always be polite and just be really kind. And I think through that process, it's as much as you trying to find the right sales associate as them trying to find the right client for them as well. Yeah. So that's how I'd go about starting the sales associate connection. And then like in terms of you communicating with your essay, like how often do you, or is it kind of like on a person to person, like is, does it, is it different with everyone? It varies, I would say. It depends on how often you shop and some people, they go in maybe once a quarter to Hermes and yeah. they have a really great relationship with their sales associate. Other people, they go in once a month and that's more than enough for them. And then other people can go in like once a week. So it yeah. really depends. I would say stick to your communication with them being in store and then based on however they want to communicate with you, they'll let you know. So it could either be email or texting. Mm -hmm. I know my first uh, sales associate like relationship started off via email and then they switched me over to texting because they said it would just be easier. And now I just only text with my sales associate. Now I also want to be mindful too and point out here that there is such a thing as over communication. Yeah. So be mindful that yes, you want to like build a relationship with a sales associate, but at the same time, like they're not someone that is your friend, if you will. Like, so you don't want to over step your boundaries. Yes. Overstep yeah. your boundaries. Yeah. Cause I know it can get really easy to be like, I want to tell them everything that's going on in my life and why this product would, will fit into my life. Because you're like, oh, I'm going to get this sandal, it's for this event, blah, blah, blah. Like, but if you're talking to them on a regular basis, they have other clients. My sales associate had over 200 text messages. So a it's a lot. So if, for instance, like I'm texting my sales associate for, let's say it's a second appointment, I would be like, oh, hey, I'm coming. Um, I would love to come in. What day works for you? And this time is preferable for me with my schedule. I would love to get X, Y, Z. I would only give them like, you know, my top three items and then that's it. And then they would just come back with like an agreed time. And then I'd leave everything open for more conversation when I'm in store. And then even when I'm in store, I'm not like just talking about my life with them. If anything, I'm talking more about their mess products, maybe throwing in like, you know, very small personal things and then hearing personal things from them. But I'm also very cognizant of their time. Like my sales associate will tell me, oh yeah, we have an hour to shop. So like, or we have a 30 minute you know, window to shop, I'll always make sure like we're done by that time because I don't want to go into their other shopping time with a different client. Yeah, and then you also have to like factor in um, getting rung up and like all of that in, in that time. Exactly. Yeah. If I'm window shopping, I'm actually not texting my sales associate. I'm just going in on my own, taking a look because I, I know that their time can be better spent on uh, servicing a client that actually is intending on shopping. So that's a really good point. Yeah, that's what I think with that. Also, if your sales associate only emails, it's really easy to feel like you have so much space to write, but also be cognizant that again, it takes time to read that. So yeah. if they're getting like over 200 messages, just keep it brief and to the point. Sometimes people have like really long wish lists. I would typically just start with what are my priority items, make sure they have that. And then after that, then like, you know, update So you them. can send them a wish list. Yeah. And be yeah. like, these are the things that I'm looking out for. Yeah. So basically it depends how it works. Like some people want you just to email them your, your wish list. Okay. Other people just want you to tell them in person in the store yeah. what your wish list is. I mean, there is specific products that like people want, but I would almost be like, this is generally what I like. This is my style. And I almost because they know it yeah. so well, like I would almost be like, what do you recommend? Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like then you can discover new products through that and through them getting to know your personal style. Because I always love like, there's this one store that I go to um, 
back in New Jersey where they know me and they'll say like, hey, I know this is your style, so like, what do you think about this? Yes. And it's like, hot, like majority of the time, like, I'll get that because like, they know that it suits me. That's actually a really great point and I think uh, sales associates, once you build that relationship, that's when it really starts to pay off because they'll be like, oh, I know this, they like this type of product and then offer you that. So I think that's really smart if you can kind of keep it open-minded and then that way you can get offered products that you didn't even think that you were looking for. Yeah. Actually, that's a great point because one time I wanted a silk product for my hair, so I was just going to get a Twilly and my sales associate randomly recommended a scrunchie with like um, a ribbon on it and it was perfect and I, if I was just adamant about like that one Twilly, yeah. I would have never found this other product that I really loved. So. That's so cool. In terms of frequency to ask for a quota bag, so that's like a Birkin or a Kelly bag, I would recommend not bringing it up every single time you visit the store, which I don't think people are typically doing that, but just as if you're someone new, you like might... courtesy. Yeah, as yeah. a courtesy, just like don't bring it up every time. I would say mention it once. I don't know if I would mention it the very first time, but maybe like second time or third time you go into the store. And then after that, you can wait a little bit again and then you can mention it maybe one other time. So I really would only mention a total of like two times tops yeah. and then leave it alone. And those two times I wouldn't, I would space it out very, you know, long increments, like with months between it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I think it's good for the sales associate to be aware that you want one of these bags. Otherwise, if you don't express that interest, unless it's like a really wonderful sales associate who's just like, you should get one of these bags. Otherwise, the sales associate's not really going to know that you're interested in one of those bags. So I think expressing that interest and being upfront about it is totally okay. I think just, again, you want to be mindful that it's not an expected thing that you'll get. It's just more of a nice thing that yeah. through the experience you could get, just given the limited quantity that they do have. But I just want to mention that since I know sometimes people are like, oh, when should I mention it? Is it okay if I, if I mention that I want one? Totally okay mentioning that you want one, just don't bring it up too often. Like me personally, like I wouldn't mention it at all, but then you're like, well, then they won't know like what you want. Like what if you want a Kelly and they offer you a bet? Like, you know what I mean? So, yes, exactly. Yeah. And then when we were at Hermes, your sales associate said that they're, so like I love, and I think this is like with anything, like if I go to a restaurant, if I go to a store, if I go like, into someone's area of expertise i love being like what's the most underrated mm, thing yeah like what do you recommend like that not a lot of people kind of look at but like actually mm. like it's great and so your sales associate said bully bag yeah mm -hmm. yeah said that that was underrated mm -hmm. which like i think like that it is like a beautiful bag but like what would you say to like what would your underrated bag be or underrated product yeah i think for underrated products uh i guess we start off with a bag i don't know if it's really underrated but i personally love it and i think i would love for more people to talk about it. it's a kelly pochette bag mm -hmm. it's basically it looks like a mini kelly so it's just like a smaller version of the kelly with a small handle on it not as rigid as this but like a softer handle and no strap so it's like a clutch oh that's cute yeah it's really beautiful i love it i think you can wear that like going out for evenings i've seen people also style it really cool ways like they'll get a chain from hermes like a long hermes i think necklace yeah and then make that a strap but you can do like a scarf or a silk strap. scarf that would be really Exactly. So I think it's just really cool and unique, the Kelly Pochette. I think it's very underrated. It's something that I personally would love to add to my collection. So love that bag. I would say in terms of other products that are just underrated, I guess going to my earlier um, one is just their hair products. I really love the scrunchie I got and then they came out with the version that didn't have a ribbon. And given I do love their silk products, I really think it's cool when they make it into hair accessories. Yeah. And actually, uh, they have headbands too, which is really cute. Oh, that's so mm -hmm. cute. Oh, that's so amazing. I think those are very underrated. I personally love hair accessories, so I even though I don't really wear them on here, but I do yeah. love them. No, I've seen you wear them out. Like, yeah. You know. Their beauty line is also pretty underrated. Yeah. It was gorgeous. It was so like, um, like chic. Like everything was just so like 
manicured. Like it was, it was beautiful. Yeah, and you actually got a lip stain too, right? Yeah, the that was one. really cute. Yeah, yeah, I kind of have it on today. I really liked while we were there. I mean, I don't know if it's like a really popular product, but those trays, the like homeware trays yes. that have the designs on mm -hmm. them, that's so beautiful because like you can use that as like a catch-all dish or you can have that kind of anywhere in your house and like that's such a beautiful like simple thing mm -hmm. that is like so elegant and it's just like a nice little you know especially if you love the the brand it's like a nice little reminder to yes. to have you know i love that that's a great every one. day mm -hmm. so now like getting into it in terms of bags because like i hear you talk about bags a lot like can you kind of just give like the basics of like the different bag like models mm. what are like the leathers the hardware like that mm. kind of thing like can you can you break it down because this yes. is where I like got confused yes yeah and definitely help me navigate along the way from like yeah. going too technical but so let's start off with the Birkin so the Birkin comes in a variety of sizes you have I'm going to go with like the most popular the sizes yeah yeah so there's a 25 which is the smallest size that you can get in a Birkin. So this is the 30, so it's um, okay. smaller than this. And then there is a size 30, which is this one. Then there's a bigger one, which is a size 35. And it's more of like a big tote bag, so you can really use it for travel. And then there's even bigger sizes of that. So those are the standard sizes of the Birkin. So like you have, this is a 30, and then these two, are they the same size? So yeah, these two are the same size. They're both a 25. The reason why they might look a little bit different in sizing uh, is because that one's retourne. Uh, this is the type of leather that it is. Actually, retourne, uh, the sides, it's like kind of like folded oh, in. Oh, yeah, And then yeah, this yeah. one's a lot more rigid. This is cellier. And what that means... Oh, oh my gosh, it's like, oh, it's all my yeah. <laughs> So basically what that means is, so it's like a, like inside out of the bag, whereas yeah. this is... Um, it's like more goes in. Yeah. And I think it's actually the way that they make it. Like, I think it's literally like they flip the bag and then this is wow. like the inside part of the bag which is why it looks like that it's so beautiful it's, i like both styles yeah so that's the kelly so this is the um this is not the small size they do have a mini kelly which is really really small i think i don't know if this is in frame but it's more like the size of my chanel cosmetic bags that mm -hmm. would be the mini kelly this is size 25 then there's a size 28 after that which is more of like, you know, in line with a size 30, just in terms of like that medium size. And then they also have a size 32 for Kelly, which is bigger than that. I actually recommend when checking out sizes to go to a resale shop and to try on the bags because that's what I did. And I feel like in store, it's really hard to try on these bags because they don't always have them in stock. So that's size 32, which is more in line with for the Kelly, which is more in line with the Birkin 35 size that's bigger than this one. And those are probably the main sizes for the Birkin and Kelly. The third bag I'd throw in sizes would be for the Constants. There's a Micro Constance that's pretty small, again, similar to the Mini Kelly. Then there's the Mini Constance, which is just like a smaller Constance, probably, you know, more in line with this Kelly 25. And then there is the uh, Constance 24, which is a larger Constance. And then you have the Constance Elon, which is like a long Constance that looks more like a clutch, if you will. Oh, cool. So those are the different sizes. I guess that before I get to leathers, do you have any questions on that? I was actually going to yeah. say, so like for instance, this one at the side, do they have particular sides? Like is it the same? I think these kind of look more yes. similar. Yes, retourne style. So that's why these two look the same. They actually have a Birkin Cellier, which is a little bit harder to get. I would say harder to get because I don't think it's as um, many bags are made in this style, but it's called the Birkin Cellier, and that's with the more rigid yeah. structure. So you will see that as well. That's but you're so right, cool. these are similar. And I know that this sounds like, like, because I don't know a lot about it, but like, why do people, I feel like everyone carries their bag open. Yes. People, like, I would be scared that all my stuff would fall out. But yeah. I that's just me. No. But I feel like everyone carries their bags like open. Like, is that just like the, the thing? I think, it, yes, I think partially it's like cool, cool, like chic look to have it open. I will say, at least for the Birkin, it's really hard to close it. Like, okay. it takes so much time to put together. Like, I can show you, but it'll just be me struggling on camera <laughs> to do it. But uh, the Kelly, I actually personally keep mine closed. Like, yeah. I. 
I think maybe it feels, if you ever see me in photos with it open, it's literally just for the photo because yeah. I don't feel secure with that being open because it hangs pretty I much. really like it closed. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I mean, both are beautiful, but like, because I, like, you'd want to show off the hardware. Yeah, Personally. I think it's beautiful yeah. clothes. Just the basics of popular leathers that people should be aware of. So there's Togo leathers, pretty popular leather. So this is to yes. to to Togo. Yes. Togo. Togo leather, okay. Yes. So that's Togo leather. It's probably one of the most popular Hermes leathers, especially when it comes to Birkins, because it is really durable and just easy to clean type of leather. So it like wears well. Yes, exactly. So that's why a lot of people go for Togo. It also ha gives you that more like Saatchi effect too, mm -hmm. which is like that cool casual look that a lot of people go for. Then the other leather that's really popular is in Epsom leather. I don't have that here, but if I had to say out of all these, what it's similar to is probably this one here. Okay. So Epsom, a lot of people get that for the Kelly because a lot of people want that rigid look for the Kelly. And so Epsom is a hard leather. If you feel it, like it's very hard. And it's pretty great because again, it's easy to clean. Yeah. It's pretty resistant to scratches as well. Like you're not gonna scratch it as easily per se as this one's Swift, so it's a softer leather. So I would say Epsom's like the number two most requested leather. Then you get other leathers to be aware of is Swift leather. I know people used to say- So this is Swift mm -hmm. leather, okay. And it's more buttery soft. It People used to not like this leather at all. They were like, oh, it'll get scratched because it's so soft. It's more like lambskin leather. But I personally love it because I think it, it does have that like luxury feel to it. I appreciate the different varieties of leathers. Also, I, I really have come to appreciate bags with scratches on it. I think it just yeah. adds character to it. Yeah. I, I love just using my bag, so I don't really mind if I get a scratch here and there. I always think of like Mary Kay Olsen. Didn't mm -hmm. she have like, a, like an Hermes bag that she just kind of like used? And I love it. I'm like, yeah, you used it every day. Like you appreciated it. Like that's, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I would rather, me personally, I would rather like wear it use it even if it gets like scratches or whatever like you're enjoying it exactly yeah. exactly that and i think it just looks beautiful with all the scratches on it like which actually brings me to box leather which i think ages super oh. well so this is a box a box there's okay because i was like is that i thought that a box kelly was a different style of kelly mm -hmm. but is that the leather it's the leather okay. yes so you could get like a box constance like a bag the Constance bag in box leather, you could get wallets and I think certain wallets maybe in box, but basically box looks a lot like Tadillac leather, uh, or I would say inverse, like Tadillac looks a lot like box leather because box leather is the original. It's very smooth, kind of green, it's shinier, It's it really is such a beautiful leather, and I think it's a really high, highly requested leather, and unlike Togo and Epsom that I would say wouldn't say it's easier to get, but maybe more readily available leathers. Box leather, I would say, is a little bit um, rarer type of leather to yeah. get. Not that it's super rare, but it's just like a little bit rarer to get. Uh, but that's like a that's like a heritage leather that the box leather. Okay. So it's really beautiful. That's a good leather to know. I guess other leathers just to be aware of. There's Clemence leather. It's a very popular leather too. It's very similar to Togo leather in the fact that it's like pretty durable. You see- Is it more like of that like grain? Yes, okay. exactly. It looks very similar to this. Then there's Chevre leather, which is like the goat skin leather that's on the inside of most of these bags. It's like really nice feeling. I think it has a lot of, um, you just like see the veins on it a lot of more, They're the veining of the leather. That's really beautiful one. I don't see that often, so but it's just something that you hear a lot talk. So you hear Chevre, that's a leather. Then there's Berania for Borg leather, which is like a really beautiful smell of leather. It's like in a brown color. Oh, that cool. one. I think I uh, like your um your artisan video. She's yes. talking about the the like different smells of the leathers. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm like I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that one's a pretty popular, not popular leather in the sense that there's a lot of them. More like people really love that leather. I think that's also probably harder to get leather, but it's really beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say those are pretty much like the basic leathers I would be aware of. And then there's more leathers. A that. lot, lot, oh more. Gosh. I don't know how you guys like, but like this is a lot. But also like I'm learning it for the first time. Yeah. So, but that's no. so cool. Yeah. Um, and then like hardware is like, so obviously is this just gold or is there like a name for it? It like silver? So yeah, it's just gold. Okay. And then that's palladium. That's like, okay. I guess the technical way of saying it is like palladium. And then there's rose gold too. Oh cool, So Beautiful. that one they do have. And then there's certain hardwares that are only for special order. So only if you make a custom bag in store and you have to get offered that from a sales associate. It's not really typical to get offered a special order. Yeah. It's more if you have like a long-term relationship with the sales associate. So there's more, even more hardwares to choose from, but cool. for the basics, it's gold, palladium, and rose gold. Okay, if you say cool. silver, they'll still know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, well that's good to know. I know that there are different stamps. Yes. If you custom order a bag, it has a star on it. Is that what that is? So yeah, the custom order ones are actually oh, horseshoe. Horseshoe. Okay. So the custom order is horseshoe, which funny enough, I have one just by chance because someone didn't pick up their special order, so I was able to get one. But typically, those take like a year before you actually get the bag. Yeah. And then, so that's the horseshoe stamp. The shooting star stamp is if the Hermes artisan made the bag for oh, themselves. That's from, it's from your artisan yes. video. That's where I got the shooting star from. Okay. Yeah, so that's that one. And then there's other uh, stamps for if it's like an exotic bag. That's so special how they do that. Yeah, I love it. Like, that's really, that's really cool. Mm hmm And I guess also, because I know you mentioned this earlier, the colors too, like just like basic oh, colors. Oh yeah, so like what are your colors and then like what are the kind of, you know. So I'm gonna list out like the basic colors that yeah. most people are aware of, but when I'm saying this too, be mindful if these are the basic colors. Yes, they'll have a lot of these in stock because they make them often, but a lot of people are asking for them. So I actually personally think that you're better off asking for colors like more colorful colors because then you'll have a better opportunity to get a bag. Also, I just want to mention that Hermes is really known for their colors, like the pigmentation of their colors on the yeah. bag. Even like the red, like it's so like pigmented, which is so nice. They really do a great job of getting the color on the leather. The basics are Noir is black. Okay, cool. Then there's Etan, which is this one, which is like a gray color. Then there's Etoup which is like a tan color. Mm -hmm. Then there is Nata and Cray, which are both like a cream color, like this a little bit. Then there is Blue Nui, which is this one, which is a navy blue. There is Rouge V, which is like a red, like a classic red. I would also say an even more cl popular classic red is Rouge Cossac. Mm -hmm. That's another red a lot of people ask for. There's also a newer red, Rouge Decor, which is more orange undertones, whereas this one's, I would say, oh, that's blue. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. So those are, like, I'm trying to think what all other popular, like, neutral color bags. Mm, oh, of course. Like, this is probably number one after um, Noir is the gold. So the gold color is just that brown like, color. Oh, okay. So if you're, like, gold on gold, it's brown color with gold hardware. But that's why it's also important to be aware of what the seasonal colors are because they come out with new colors every season and oh, wow. those I think are just beautiful, beautiful bags. So like I mentioned Rouge Decor which was like a red with orange undertones came out and it was just a really nice um, variation from their typical reds. Beautiful. I personally love jewel tones. Mm, so like anything yes. jewel tone, I'm like, I'm here for. Same. Yeah. So it, it's really fun learning the different colors and seeing what color matches with your style. So I would definitely go from there and figure that out. I think too, like personally me, I would use like a lot of color theory of like putting a twilly with a bag. And yes. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Like no, I, I feel like you can definitely personalize it and yeah. you can make that color pop yes. even more. Yeah, no, I agree. I feel like the fun thing about twillies is you can bring out whatever color you want for your outfit too. Yeah. Which is really nice. From the artisan videos, like obviously it takes a lot of time to make a bag. Um, like how many would you say roughly get made Per year, mm -hmm. like, because obviously they're hard to get, and there's so many stores all over the world. Like, mm -hmm. 
what do you is that like a known thing or does it kind of just vary so it's not a known thing but i did read once in business insider that there's about two hundred thousand bags that are in circulation per year that basically get made i think it also really depends on what stores get you know a certain amount of bags so that's why for instance like the flagship store in paris gets a large inventory of bags and that versus a store that's maybe in the US that is in a smaller city will get less amount of bags. So the inventory really varies and I think that's just important to keep in mind which is why some people suggest oh it's better to go to more touristy locations because the stock will actually be a little bit better there because they'll get sent more bags. But yeah it's never it's not really a known thing it really just depends and that's kind of the the mystery and that no one really knows. <laughs> That's cool. I, I really appreciate that. Is there a limit on yeah what you can get or I mean I guess it's kind of just according to the brand? Yes. So actually there is a set limit. Like you can only get two quota bags per year like per client. So basically if I got two Kellys I'm done for the year and I won't be able to get like my third Birkin bag. Now there's always exceptions. Some people say that if you're like a VVIP client, then there is no such thing as a quota bag. But again, I'm not sure. I just know what the standard is. Yeah. Also, that being said, there's also some exceptions. I've heard where if you have a special order bag and you've already bought oh, two, that makes sense. then okay. they're still going to allow you to get your special order bag because you've waited so long to get it, which yeah. is really nice of the brand. Just another thing to keep in mind, it hasn't happened, but I think this is like in the works, but apparently I think Hermes is working on merging profiles across like worldwide. So right now my US profile and my France profile are not connected. They can't see what I purchased. Mm -hmm. So that's going to change, I believe, I don't know when, but like I've heard they're working on it, so it might change where, okay, I can only get two quota bags in across the board. So yeah. technically if I want to get two from my LA store and two from France, I could get four bags a year. Is there anything else that you think like people getting the like getting into the brand should know? I think my only advice is that I know that just generally, not even just Hermes, but like luxury shopping can be pretty intimidating. And I think that the best way to just go about it is to be confident, just go in, know that the sales associate is just another person too. And it's all about just like at the end of the day, making sure you're having a great time while you're shopping. Cause like it is part of a whole experience that you should be having and making sure you're, you know, you're just buying what you truly love when you do go shop. And I think that if you go in with that approach with no expectations, I think that you're going to have a really great time. I think Hermes is the creme de la creme when it comes to products. I think not just handbags. I think, you know, their handbags definitely for me personally are like number one, but all of their products are just so well made. I think I've had just really amazing service, especially when shopping. I've met so many great sales associates. It's so cool because I feel like your personal style is so well represented in these bags and like it's so nice like if we're having a nice dinner or something like we've had many nice yeah <laughs> but like you'll bring out your bag and it just makes it so much more special Aww. and you know it's it's really nice thank you yeah. i guess georgina is there any like last parting words like you have for them like just like with your experience shopping or with learning more about hermes going into a store and shopping it, it's fun but like i really had no idea about the community behind it and i mm -hmm. think that that's really beautiful yeah. And that you guys can like all kind of share like a collective love of things and done like meetups and stuff with mm -hmm. other people and yeah like I think that's so cool and like we're just appreciating you know art essentially yeah like that's and and like skills you know like it's it's really cool to see mm -hmm. and I feel like now when I watch your videos I can be like yeah I know what that means <laughs> oh yay honestly I couldn't have said it better and you said it perfectly. Yeah, I'm just glad that we did this together. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. We reached the end of today's video. I'm going to let Georgina do the outro. So if you liked this video, uh, please like or subscribe and ring. Do people say ring the bell? Yeah. Ring the bell, please. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.